Oh, okay. Well, um, I'm Lamone Shockley, uh, Lamone Coley on, on Facebook and all the other social media sites, uh, Instagram and stuff like that. Uh, I'm the creator, the creator of the Colossal Master. Um, like I say, over the past two years since I talked to you, um, I had what? I think I had a little, I did, I had two litters back then. Yeah. I don't know if they hit the ground yet or was they, uh, on the way or what, but, I think, um, yeah, you just finished one and then you were having another one, I think. Uh, but I do got a nail off of Kessler. That's Cognac. I, uh, pretty much showed him off, uh, to a bit, uh, recently. And then, um, I got a female off of the Zara. That's sick, yeah. Um, real nice. She actually bigger than her mama already. Uh, taller, um, she more built up like a father. She taller, more longer dog than her mama is. But got to look just like her mama, though. Um, but like I say, uh, since then, man, the breed has been doing excellent. Like uh, a lot of people been recognizing the dogs. Uh, I get a lot of people on a regular basis hitting me up and asking me about the breed and puppies and studs and stuff like that. So. I'm definitely happy about that. Um, I, I actually have people who um, came on as breeders also. So I got, um, and, they, and I think by next year, yeah, by next year, um, there's a few other people besides myself who will be having uh, Colossal Masters uh, puppies and stuff, you know what I'm saying, besides me. They still register through the American Dog Federation too. Uh, so, and they come directly from me, you know, so it's not like a, Thing when a person got a dog for me and cross into what they had and uh, call them colossal masters, anything like that is directly for me. They got male, females, and they'll stop breeding by next year. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been doing a lot of protection work with the dogs lately, um, especially back then. Uh, like a, maybe like a year ago, I think like, yeah, like the summer before last year, yeah, about, yeah, about a year ago, probably. I went through pretty much the whole summer doing protection work with all the dogs, just getting them um, up to the parts of where I want them to be. Um, this summer, I work with the puppies. That's Cognac and Sindel and Loki. Uh, well, Loki about to be two years old. But, I mean, that's still because the puppy he ain't full grown to three. But um, I've been doing protection work with all, with all the puppies. Uh, They're doing excellent, real good, real confident, uh, biting good. Uh, just doing everything that I, you know what I'm saying, bread them to be. So I'm, I'm definitely happy with that. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually, I don't know if I was registered through the American Dog Federation back then when we had the first interview. No. Um, I wasn't? No, I don't think so. Okay, well, yeah, that's that's new since then, too. I, I got the dogs recognized through them. Um, so they all registered through the American Dog Federation. I had another interview with Battlebred. And um, after that interview, I got a lot of people to recognize the breed through that interview, too. And also, the registry that I was uh, registered through, they, they liked it so much that they made me a judge through the American Dog Federation. So I got my uh, judge license and everything through them. I could, uh, you know, judge shows and uh, obedience and, you know, just uh, different working groups. It's, it's, it's a, I think it's like three groups that I could judge. I got the license in the house. I have to go in there and look, but... Uh, that was exciting and then it was out the blue too so um, they've been doing like I say the, the breed been doing excellent they, it's everything that I always dreamed of mm-hmm. the kind of wish you said hey, can you remind people what the foundation was with the Colossal Masters and, yeah. and your idea behind that yeah um, it's Neapolitan Master African Borble uh, Pitbull game people uh, back in the day not the new recent stuff um, Connie Corso and English Masters mm-hmm. um, I chose those it's, it's, it's more so based off a of dog more so based off of different dog breeds that's what it's called the Colossal Master because it's, it's really based off my dog I had years ago uh, named Colossus so he's heavily bred into these dogs that's the way they kind of look and act the way that they do is based off him. The other dogs that I added in was just because I needed an outcross in to it fit in with what my program was about. Um, a big, the Colossal Master is basically a, a big working dog, a big family protection dog. Um, 
they are big dogs at the end of the day, but they're not lazy by no means. They're not big, fat, sloppy dogs. They're not overly muscular or overly heavy bone dogs where they can't move. They they real um they got real good muscle tone. They more leaner than like I say, more lean and heavy. Um they they they're more more of a running master. More so like a corso, a bit heavy and a bit bigger than a corso, but not as uh I would say like stiff movement as a Neapolitan master. Mm-hmm. And nowhere near bone wise as a Neapolitan master. Mm-hmm. So it's kinda of in between the two. If I had to compare it in between two, it wouldn't even be a Neapolitan master, it'd be more compared in between the corso and the presser. Mm-hmm. Um they more got a a temperament more like a presser. Um but a better family attitude, more family oriented to the oppressor. But they're bigger, they're bigger dogs than oppressor, uh, taller dogs, they're more stretched out than oppressor. Um, but if I had to compare them to any dog that's out already, it would be between the course and the oppressor. But to me, they, um, they work better, uh, to me. And they, um, actually, like I say, better family oriented dogs than, uh, the two, to me and I own both. So you know, it's, it's really hands-on experience when I say that. It's not just something I'm reading about or nothing like that. Um, and I guess that's, I mean, because I bred them that way at the end of the day. I use, in my program, I used those that was everything was close to what I wanted. And the outcome is, is that at the end of the day is when you're using good dogs, you get a good outcome. And that's exactly what the Colossal Master is. It's, it's um, like I say, an all around good family protection dog. But they good with kids. I have my son with them. He's been around them since they was puppies. Uh, he come out and play with them, uh, feed them. My girl the same way. When I'm at work, it's a, pretty much a 24 hour thing with them. From in the morning to four o'clock, it's me. And then from 4.30 to that time I get home at 12 or one o'clock, then it's both of us. So, um, it's always somebody here, um, uh, you know, just to give them their basic needs, food, water, um, she know how to worm the dogs and I, I gotta teach her how to do vaccines and all that, but she getting that. But uh, like I say, she, they, they do good. My, one of, uh, my customers, he had one, he just had a baby. Not, well, she about a uh, year or two, nine, but, um, by the time he brought her home from the hospital, he had out there with the, they had the dog got around her. He was perfectly fine. He was like protecting her the whole nine. It was never no issue. She was going over and crawling and, messing with the food and all that. He never harmed or anything like that. So that was um, A1 about them. Um, but I, I kind of knew that anyway because they, they did good with my son all these years. My son 13 years old and, and um, he do excellent with them. But uh, like I say, they they real good um, dogs that really train on your lifestyle at the end of the day. Um, whatever kind of person you are, that's the kind of dog that uh, they'll be. They still always gonna keep that protection, that protective instinct. Um, they always gonna keep you safe if you're going out, and you will notice that at an early age. They will start showing it about four, five months. Yeah, you know, I had dogs at eight to ten weeks that wouldn't let a stranger get close to me, even though they little puppies and they don't, they can't really hurt nobody. But they were showing it that early and just like, damn, that's crazy that they really doing this at this <laughs> at this age and confident with it too you know really full fledged and going towards the person and everything so I was like oh man this is crazy but in around four five months um, if you're doing the right thing and I mean like really bonded with your dog uh, really spending time taking care of them really showing them how you living and, and, and really give them, get them used to your lifestyle they'll, they'll protect you with their life at the end of the day and that's, and that's without um, training and I'm not saying that they go um full fledged and go out and bite nobody at the end of the day. It ain't like that. And um it, as far as you know, training, it's always you gotta touch the dog first. And no dog is just gonna it's it's a certain few dogs that's gonna really get out of here and really make it through to do without any training on them. So that's why I train my dogs in the first place. But they do show signs of it at an early age and, and majority of the time when I put them in a the situation as far as going into training, they do excellent um immediately it's not really a situation where you got to do a whole bunch of agitation and uh you know really trying to get them the dog nerves to to get the dog to uh you know fight back they naturally do it just off the bond of, of you a bond of you being there and just knowing that you in a situation where that dog where you need that dog and that dog will come through for you. um 
um, well, you know, since the uh, I got my judge license now, um, I'm thinking about doing some um, shows, like a lot of master shows. Like so I got a few people around the world in different states who have the dogs now. So that would be something that um, I talked to them about it too. That's something that they'd be interested in. And hopefully people in the future who buy dogs, that'd be something that they'd be interested in too. And I think it's, you know, just something to really market the dogs and really get them out there. Um, I did a couple of, uh, what you call it, like really uh, like events, like at the, at the park and stuff like that. I got people coming out, even if you don't have a, Colossal Master, whatever dog you got, it was like one of those kind of events, like just come and show up. We all, uh, you know, meet, greet, network, uh, see each other dogs outside of Facebook, you know, because uh, all we look at on Facebook is just pictures and people could Photoshop and do all kind of crazy stuff nowadays. So it's always good to just see what people got in person. Mm-hmm. And um, a lot of times, you know, people be nice people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think a lot of times on Facebook, people think that everybody is like haters and they think they're against everybody dog. And a lot of times it's not even like that. A lot of these people are like really, really nice, genuine people. Yeah. But, um, uh, I'm, I'm trying to do, I want to do shows. You know, I got a couple of breedings coming up. I got a breed I actually just did last week that's dropping in November. That's going to be real nice. Um, and just, you know, really doing as much as I can as far as promoting. I'm um, I'm putting a website together, too. I actually bought the website already and everything. I just got to put it together. So that's something I'm going to work on. I meant to do that this summer. But uh, we just had a baby. I just had a daughter uh, last month, 29. So uh, we've been doing, uh, you know, a lot of uh, she keeping us up at night and yeah. stuff yeah. like that and going to work and dealing with the dogs. So it's a lot. So when I get uh, some free time, I'm going to start working on the website. Uh, you know, we have all the dogs on there. Um, not only um, in my kennel, at, at my house, they had uh, dogs from, you know, everywhere. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much... Uh, in different states right now, upcoming litters, um, the protection stuff that we do, um, all kinds of stuff, history on the dogs, you know, uh, the reason why I put the dogs together and where they at right now and getting into the uh, American Dog Federation. Hopefully I can get into some of these other registries. Uh, the problem, it's not really a problem getting registered with other registries. It's just the fact that it's such a new breed that registers want to call it a band dog and I, it, I'm not really messing with registers that want to call it a band dog because I put so much work into it all these years and it's so consistent at this point I just wouldn't really want to mess with the registers who going to give it the name that I gave it, you know right. what I mean right. so um, that's that, I, if I, you know anybody want to Registers want to come on board with me and really register dogs as colossal masses. I'm, I'm, that's what I really want to do. Just like I say, get them out here as, as much as I possibly can and really get people to understand that this is um, this dog is everything that I that I say they are. And and I really the people who get the dogs from me, they man they call me all the time and they they say the same thing. They be like, oh my god, man, this. You said this and you said that, man. I, I can't believe it. I ain't never had a dog that that was like that in my life. And I'm like, yeah. And it's so crazy because uh, uh, the litters that I had last year, well, two years ago, should I say, um, I had people who came and got, you know, uh, published from the first litter. And, you know, I had the next litter a few months later. Now, within these few months, these dogs were so good at their own that they, these, the second litter basically went to the people who got dogs in the first litter. That's how impressed <laughs> they was within a few months. It was like, oh my God, I can't, this dog is like, man, it's showing the protectiveness and all this already. It's, it's doing such and such. They easy to train. And I mean, I'm coming back to get another one within like, I, what it was like, I think it was like three months apart. And I was like, man, who so. Like I say, they, everything that I, I, I say, they, I bred them that way to be that. I don't try to sugarcoat nothing. I, even when I do protection work, I'll show flaws and all. At the end of the day, I, it's no perfect dog. And then that one show people that I'm, I'm constantly building. I'm not at the point where I'm at a standstill. Like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm finished. That's what it is. No, it's always something to fix um, with the breed dog at that day. It ain't nothing perfect. And as a breeder, as a good breeder, should I say, you want to do everything that you can to try to get the best possible dogs that you possibly get. And that's, that's my 
intent with this whole thing. I, I like what I got right now, but I'm always, um, you know, I'm still researching. I know a lot about dogs and not just my breed, about a lot of breeds and just everything to do with dogs itself. But I'm always still researching and just trying to find something new. It might be something that I thought was right and realistically might have been wrong and somebody corrected me on I ain't afraid to say, oh man, I, I was wrong. I'll, I'll always want to learn. So as long as I could uh, burn the bill from it, that's fine with me and that's why I apply to these dogs and that's, I think that's one of the big reasons they, um, they are how they are. Um, now, I got a few generations to go before I actually need an outcross, mm-hmm. but that is something that I've been thinking about. Um, that, but if, if I, you know, um, if I do, when I get to that point, it's always going to be something that's, um, uh, that complements what I already have. Mm-hmm. I never go out really outside the box, you know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, like with breeders, I mean, with breeding, Whatever you put in is going to eventually come out. So I'd rather go uh, with something that's really consistent with what I already have um, as far as look, temperament, uh, movement, um, you know, stuff like that. A dog that and a dog that's kind of already proven as, as far as breeding. Um, I don't want to just take a random good dog that ain't really been bred before and I already know what this dog doing is just take a chance. I'd rather take a chance on a dog that's already got some established dogs out here and I gotta know, you know, what he coming to the table with at the end of the day. Um, so with like I say, when the time comes, that's that's pretty much the mindset of uh what it's gonna be. Mm-hmm. Um uh, to me if it was something that's pretty similar and uh, it would probably be oppressor. Um or a press across, maybe. Um, I, I always say I ain't want to put presser in my dogs because I want to, in a way, kind of compete with the presser. So I ain't want to use presser in my dogs. That's kind of like taken away from the competition in a way. But um, I don't know. You never know uh, yeah. when it when it gets when it gets to that point. We, we'll see. Well, I don't actually co-own dogs, but the dogs that I do uh, sell out. I do have breeding rights on them, okay. so I can use, uh, you know, whichever dogs that I really want. Um, it's just really a matter of getting there to do the breed, you know, them getting here, have we, uh, you know, set it up. But uh, yeah, that's that's one thing I always do. I always try to keep the breeding rights because uh, just the dogs on the yard, I don't, I don't want to keep breeding until I get too tight. I'd rather, you know, take uh, some of the stuff to other litters that that was around and mm-hmm. you know bring some stuff back up to the forefront and you know stuff like that so mm-hmm. i always make sure i keep the breeding rights and all the dogs yeah yeah that's cool. especially right now it's so early and you know it ain't, it ain't a really recognized breed like that like that so yeah at this point i always try to make sure it's I always keep the breeding rights this i need it at this point <laughs> right um, well, like I said, when I, it was based off Colossus. Like, Colossus was like one of the best dogs, if not the best dog I probably had growing up. So, um, uh, I wanted to expand on him. And, um, as long as I kept that temperament, that look, and I wanted to expand on the size. He, he, he wasn't really, uh, as big as these dogs were. Um, he was shorter compared to them. They got the same body style, the same look like that, but he's not as tall and as stretched out as the dogs I have now, which is fine because that's exactly what I wanted, a more tall, stressed out version of him. Um, but for the thinking wise, um, it's, it's pretty much the same. It's, it's, uh, you know, just keeping that, that Colossus look, keeping that temperament, um, keeping that consistency as far as breeding dogs and selecting the right dogs to, go, to further on the program and just uh, keeping them healthy. That's the one good, the other good thing about uh, my program is out of 17 years of breeding these dogs, I haven't had any health issues. As big as these dogs are, I, I ain't had a dog from hip flesh yet. So, that's outstanding, you know what I'm saying? I, 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 and not only just my dogs that I'm keeping at home, I'm talking about people who bought dogs and stuff like that. I never get phone calls saying that dogs uh, 
unhealthy or got any kind of issues or anything like that. So as long as I can keep that going, and that's why you, I'm strict about what what go into my program mm-hmm. because I don't because I got that kind of reputation of uh, having big healthy dogs. I want to keep that reputation of having healthy dogs. So um, I want to go into a dog that's that's healthy, you know what I'm saying, and, and produce a healthy just like that, y'all. Um, but it's, it, and that's and that's pretty much. Um, as far as, you know, future, future stuff, um, with the breed, it ain't really too, too much, um, as far as now that I'm looking to change up a bit. They, they pretty much do it structurally. Um, like I said, they're good family wise, temperament wise. Um, I do want to get them into the hall, into Hogan. But, you know, I'm in Chicago, so we don't even have hogs or nothing that out here. But I would love some body down south. Uh, or, you know, just in a situation where they got hogs in the area and they can actually do it. I would love to see one of them in that, doing that. You know, that would be my dream. It would be really my dream if I could go with them or take the dog, you know, learn how it go and then take the dog yeah. and do it myself. But, uh, yeah, that's 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 really, that would be something I want to do right now as far as these. But. Um, the males, they're about 28 to 30 inches. Um 160 to 170 pounds. The females, they're the 26 to 28, and they're about 130 to 140. Um, color-wise, uh, it's different shades of brindle, uh, blue brindle, mahogany brindle, black brindle, uh, you know, just the basic brindle, uh, black, and uh, fine with the black match. And, uh, oh, yeah, I did say mahogany. But yeah, those are the uh, colors of the Colossal Master. Uh, you know, that's the standard as far as size wise. Um, and, and they pretty much, yeah, especially nowadays, they come out consistently that way. Cause the females really ain't that much, uh, smaller than the males. Um, they all got the same attitude, meaning they all protective. To me, the females might be a tad bit more protective. I don't know if that's just a female thing or what, but to me, they seem to be a little bit more, uh, like, yeah, we really ain't letting nobody get close. You know what I mean? The males, like, they like that too, but sometimes they can be a little bit more chill about. Um, but it's, 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 man, it's everything that I, uh, man, it's everything that I bred these dogs to be. Yeah, they, they got, they got Colossus down to the tea. And uh, even like the people that, um, you know, that I grew up with, uh, as far as when I had Colossus and, um, I knew the dog, new Colossus, and, and seeing, you know, what I've been doing throughout the years, they say the same thing, like, man, you really, you really outdid yourself as far as, you know what I'm saying, taking Colossus to the next level and, like, making a whole breed out of him, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, I definitely, you know, I, I try, like I said, I try the best I can to make sure that's, that, that's what it is, and, and I'm glad that people really notice that that's what I'm doing and, and notice the work that I'm putting in. And uh, really taking the time out, and you know, give me the, the, the shout outs and, and uh, hitting me up the messages and, and people coming out and seeing dogs and, and stuff like that. Because I get people now from Facebook. Because I ain't one of those guys who be like, oh yeah, we can meet at uh, you know at a gas station or stuff like that. I, you can come to my crib and actually come see the dogs. I'd rather you do that than mm-hmm. you see. Uh, a Facebook picture or a Facebook video because I got the family here. Yeah, I rather really, you see the family in person, and uh, you know I got the dogs registered. So you get a pedigree. Uh, you know it's it's names and pictures and stuff like that. But if I got the dogs on the premises, it's better for you to come see the dogs on the premises than seeing a dog on a piece of paper. You know, right. at least that's always was brought up at that mm-hmm. day. If I can see it, I want to see it. I I, I I ain't really too quick to take somebody's word for it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah, for sure. Um, research. Yeah. Definitely research. Know what you getting yourself into. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as breeding and as far as the more important part, uh, the dogs that you're going to use. Mm-hmm. Because when you're breeding, you're trying to, especially when you're trying to create something, mm-hmm. it's always easier to start off with quality than it is to just use uh, anything with a breed name just because this person say it's such and such. Mm-hmm. If it, and it don't even uh, represent the dog at that day. You know, mm-hmm. it's a lot of that kind of stuff out here nowadays. People calling uh, dogs names that it, that it ain't, you know. And people who don't know if you, like I said, if you don't do your research, you don't know you, you'll 
you'll fall for it. You'll be out and you'll be out here parading, thinking it's uh, whatever dog breed you thought it was, but realistically it ain't. So it's always good to know what you get, know what the dog is about, what the dog's supposed to be, uh, what the dog's supposed to look like, act like, um, the whole nine. And then you go from there. And then you select a breed from there. Whatever your goal was uh, for your program, when you having those letters, you select a puppy that got the trace that's close to the goal or, yeah, y'all gonna say close to the goal because you ain't gonna come straight out the gate with dogs that's representing the goal immediately. So whatever the dogs is getting close to the goal that you um, fit as far as standard for your program, those are the dogs that you wanna keep. And those are the dogs you wanna bring together. And you constantly repeat that cycle as far as selecting dogs. And after a while, you will have a, a, a program of dogs that's uh, selected to a, the goal of the program. And, uh, you know, that's just going out, you know, and like I say, good, good dogs. Don't settle for anything. Don't just, because this guy said it's a tiny car, so, uh, and it's realistically, it's mixed with some pit bull or anything else. Know what a Connie Corso is so you can go get a real kind of Corso. And whatever dog breed it is, it's a whole lot easier starting off with. It's hard coming back when you're starting off with crap and then you want to add in good dogs over time. Because guess what? You got crap in your program. So you're going to produce crap you, and you're going to have to breed that crap out. You know what I mean? Ain't no telling how many generations of breeding that you got to do to, to, uh, breed it out but that's a long process that you don't even want to have to take so just start off with some good and select good dogs from there and 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 uh continue on your program you know selecting good dogs and i guarantee you you're gonna have you're gonna you'll have something good at the end of that but you gotta have a vision though you gotta have you gotta know you gotta know what you're looking at and, and you gotta you gotta realistically know what you want and be able to handle it and all that. Like, you know, everybody nowadays pretty much act like they want to kill a dog and all that. They're like, oh, yeah, my dog, everybody dog do protection work. Everybody dog want to protect and all that. But as we see, you know, it's, it's Facebook videos and YouTube videos where you get the uh, random people who walk into people's houses. You know, it's all uh, recording and stuff like that. But the dogs are completely running off. You know, people really thinking that, you, they didn't even touch the dog. Dog ain't never did no kind of work in his life. And just because the dog is outside the, the door, or outside the gate, barking and acting a fool, they think, oh yeah, this dog gonna bite somebody if he come in the yard. But the whole time, when somebody do come in the yard, the dog taking off. You know what I mean? So it, you gotta know uh, what you're looking at. You gotta be realistic with yourself. Don't be candle blind at the end of the day. Um, really know what you got and really know your goals and really know your standards and don't let nobody um you know tell you uh what you can't do and, t and tell you how to run your program at the end of the day it's okay to take advice but don't let nobody run your program you know what you want you know what your goals are and breathe towards those goals oh it's um uh, man it's 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 super and we'll I ain't gonna say it's, it's super important like that because I mean you can always go to the vet, but it's always convenient. That's what that's what I can say. It's convenient because when you got so many dogs and then it's they big and depending on what kind of car you got, you got to take multiple dogs to the vet. Like when you can do it at home, is 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 so man. It, it's just so convenient. You can shoot everybody up right there, write it down on the shot record, and call it a day. Now when it comes to rabies shots. I gotta take dogs to the vet, but that's what that's six trips in one day right. <laughs> to the vet for a rabies shot. So that's why I say because I I got an Impala. I don't have a uh, I don't have a truck. And my girl she got a truck, but she don't like dogs in the car. So I gotta beg and plead to her just to get the dog in there. <laughs> so most of the time, <laughs> yeah, we gonna take a trip in the Impala. So you know I ain't putting two dogs. And the two dogs are probably ain't gonna fit in there. More than likely anyway, but I ain't putting two dogs in the back seat. So that's six that's six trips in one day. Or I might they might split it up in two days. Like when I went uh a few months ago, we split it up into two days. Mm -hmm. So I took three one day and then I took three the next. But yeah, that's a lot of gas, a lot of trips. Uh yeah, so it's it's convenient when you can do it all the ones and worry dog and all that at home. It it definitely comes in. 
All natural. Yeah, yeah all natural. I, I, and that's something I, I want to breathe. I, I try to breathe for too. I, because, um, you know, I, that's that's a dog should be able to breathe. And, and, and I mean, this, the AIs are fine. Don't get me wrong. It's quick. It's straight to the point. But I, don't, I think people... I, I, it's like you breathe. You can, to me, you kind of breathe that the natural ability to breathe out the dog, uh, because it is so many artificial inseminations, and especially with the big dogs. A lot of big dogs they're so stiff in the hips and just can't do it. Uh, so a lot of people just want to go straight AI. No, I need my dogs to be able to natural side breathe, get up there, make it do what it do, and uh, you know, natural breed. I, I they AI school, but I never ever had AI there in my life. I ain't against it. Don't get me wrong. If I ever had to, I would, but I, I never had to do our officials in that snap. And I got some pretty big dogs and, and people in this. And I say, you know, they, uh, and like, to me, that, that, comes, that goes into the, the, the ability of the dog, the, the athleticism and, and, uh, mobility of the dog too. Because I didn't have people come over here, I, I, cause I stood dogs out too. So I had people come over here with little small dogs and stuff like that. And these big boys, Man, breathe to a national and everything. I know AI has none of that. They get down low enough to breathe to the dog the whole night. So, man, you and that's something, like I say, you don't see a lot of dogs out here. It's, it's bullies out here that can't even naturally breathe. So, to me, that's something that I want to keep uh, in my program, dogs that can actually pick dogs that can breathe to. Oh, they great. Um, super great, man. They um, perfect mamas, man. No. No problem, uh, birthing. You ain't gotta go in there and help. Ain't no pulling puppies out, nothing like that. They um, they take, they clean them up good, make sure everybody fed. Uh, I don't have dogs sick. You know, sometimes when you got big dogs, they get so tired, they they get you know kind of lazy or whatever, and they might smash a puppy because they just sit down and don't understand and don't notice that the puppy is underneath them. But no, they probably if a dog if a puppy get underneath them, they'll lift up. Let the uh, pull to either pull the puppy from underneath them or just give them enough space where the puppy can come from under. Uh, or they have ball up in a way where they could just gather everybody up and, and feed. So yeah, they they amazing mothers. And they and they like I say, they cool everybody in the house too. Like my son can go in there immediately and probably why they birth and then go in there and uh touch puppies and touch the dogs and my girl the same way. So yeah, they they excellent mothers, man. They they real good. Um, like I said, like I was saying earlier, to me, the females are just a tad bit more, uh, a tad bit more drivey to me. The males, don't, don't get me wrong, like they coming with it too. Um, they all coming with it, but the girls are more like, yeah, like get away from here. <laughs> like yeah. they real life, <laughs> yeah, like very, very, uh, ferocious with it. Uh, but, but they super smooth. It's so crazy because, like I said, I think when people come over, they see them going so crazy and they be thinking like, man, can they handle these dogs that crazy? They got, but they'll be going crazy like that. You can walk with the cage and they perfectly fine. They, it's not like a, you got a dog that's so aggressively and he, you're touching the dog and he turning around trying to grab you because he's so into, uh, trying to get the person that's outside the gate or outside the yard. No, they, they, they cool, laid back. They real life just trying to protect you. Mm-hmm. And they just gonna act, they, they, and something when you step on their property, they're gonna act the fool doing it because to them, you're too close. You know what I mean? So I like that about them. Um, they, they both, uh, pretty, they're both pretty uh, active, though, at the end of the day, as far as activity. I, I think they're pretty even as far as that. Uh, when the females in heat, they are, they, they a little bit more chilled out then. Uh, that's when they more to themselves, where they want to be up under you all day, uh, for the most part. Uh, but they all got that, uh, they like cats in the house. Like, my dogs come in the house, so I think people get the assumption that I keep dogs outside all the time, but I don't. Like, the dogs come in um, at a certain time of the day. And when they out in the house, I just don't let dogs roam the house, like six dogs run the house all together. First off, they're too big for that. And secondly, that's just something I don't do. I don't just let dogs roam the house like that. I have, I might have one or two out at a time, but it'd never be all six at a time. Right. And they don't even get along uh, with each other to run all six together like that. Right. Anyway, but um, they act like cats in the house, man. They, they, they real life want to be up under you. If you're not petting them, you could be petting them. 
you know, maybe five, ten minutes or whatever like that. And I'm talking about showing the real love all between the ends and stomach the whole nine. Then walk away for maybe a couple of seconds and be right back up on you, man, rubbing and like like a cat dude on how to catch me, like rubbing up on you and all that, trying to get you to uh, pat him and stuff like that. They do the exact same thing. Or they put their head on top of your lap or they fall on top of your lap. They just always want some attention. But, like I say, if anybody, you back, you chilling or whatever like that, anybody comes to that door, oh, uh, man, they going want ballistic. Not not ballistic to the point where you know it's uncontrollable, but just ballistic to let you know that it's, it's somebody here. Now, the, the smart thing I like about it, they might do all that before, you know, go open the door, things like that. But when you open the door to somebody that you know, they come all the way down and accept the person in the house and it's fine and dandy. Y'all can sit and have a good time. But if it's some strange person, which hardly ever happened in my house, I don't ever get no strange people coming over. But if they do, oh, they going crazy. I ain't never got to worry about nobody breaking in, a car getting broken into, uh uh, my girl here by herself, or she might be out walking the dogs, and ain't nobody harming her. My son, anything, nothing like that. They, they always on point, always. So, uh, to me, that's that's one of the most impressive traits about them, especially for a master, because a lot of master breeds uh, lack that nowadays, um, and and a lot of master breeds just uh, lack the, the ability to just work and, and protect uh, in general. Anyway, you know, a lot of these dogs are so water down these days that man you know a lot of people I, they put so many human qualities on these dogs and shoot them like humans that it's almost like the dogs damn they forget that they dogs anymore you know what i mean so uh I always treat my dogs like dogs don't be wrong I, they get the, the best of the best but at the end of the day i still allow the dogs to be dogs i i i never uh do some of the stuff that you see out here today that was just insane some of the some of the uh her mom, her mom, her uh, mom, her dad stuff that you see out here today. Um, no, nah, I treat my dogs like like dogs, and, and I think that's why they uh, throw that down the line, and, and they keep that ability to uh, keep that protective instinct and still keep that family orientation and, and stuff like that. Um, I feed Victor, and I feed Rob. Mm-hmm. Um, I. I Combine the two, like I, I get chicken quarters, pigtails, um, organ meat, so I might get a, a, a pig heart or, uh, you know, beef liver, um, stuff like that, like organ meat or whatever like that. I chop the organ meat up, uh, give them a whole uh, chicken quarter, um, a cup of Victor, they get some fruit, they get like uh, strawberries and blueberries. And then they get uh, mixed vegetables too. Mm-hmm. So I mix all of it up. They get fed twice a day. So at like seven o'clock in the morning, when I get up and come out and clean up the first time, and then later on in the day, uh, either I do it before I go to work, or my girl will come home and feed them and clean them up when she get home. But it's the same thing uh, that they eat in the morning, same thing that they eat in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sundays I don't feed at all. I give them a day to uh, put themselves out, uh, you know, from the whole week. And uh, Monday, we start the whole repetition back up. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. definitely are. Because yeah. the dog food itself got all the vitamins and minerals that your dog needs exactly. to strive every day. When you yeah. feed feeding straight raw, it's pretty much a big protein and calcium diet from the bone yeah. And, yeah. and just the meat alone. It's heavy protein. And that's why... Uh, you need to put, if you're going to do straight raw, uh, you definitely need those berries, you need those vegetables, you need a good multivitamin, uh, all that, because you got to replace everything that you miss without the dog food. So that's why, that's definitely why I always try to give them a good quality dog food to go in with the raw to make sure I ain't missing nothing. And on top of that, they get a, a multivitamin every other day too. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. They definitely not miss it, anything. And I could tell the difference um, from using the raw. Uh, when I first started out, I, I was I wasn't using raw. It was just strictly uh, dog food. But um, you could tell with the raw man, uh, when they, you know, using it, it's less, um, it's more, it's smaller, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh-huh. And, you know, without getting too detailed. Um, and, and the dogs look... Uh, coats look better. The dogs just look healthier. 
Um, everything about him is just to me, it's just a dog, just just grow good. Because um, I actually start with a puppy, it's giving them a raw. I start when they about 12 weeks. I uh, mix a little raw, not too much, maybe a little ground beef. Um, I maybe cut a quarter leg in half and see uh, if he could eat all of it. I might take the bone out, just give him skin and stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, I start him off early and, and just build them up into a full diet. And, yeah, the, the change that I've seen, they, they just grow different to me. They, they grow better. They grow, they grow healthier. And on top of that, I, um, you don't really see no, no joint issues either when you use using the uh, raw either. Um, like, you know, you get some big dogs, if you overdo it, um, if you depending on like you know what kind of dog food you're using, if it's a high protein dog food and you over feeding the puppy, um, you know a lot of dogs they start knuckling over. But uh, with the raw, oh uh, man, I ain't, I haven't seen that. I, and I only had one dog, maybe two. I think I had two that was that I had that I seen as puppies that knuckled over when I was just using uh, straight dog food years ago. But like I say. Um, since I started the raw and dog food mix, and man, I ain't seen a dog knuckle over uh, ever. Uh, like I say, they all got good joints, uh, hips good, move good, um, growing good. Um, man, I, I can't complain. It's, it's, it's the best solution I think I ever made. Mm-hmm. For sure. Um, well, I, I, I just, um, you know, I just, I just want to see the breed grow, man. I, I want to see people. Uh, actually, you know, have, like have people go out and looking for poor souls, oppressors, and more. But I want people to be out here looking for colossal math. Right. You know, because like I say, it's everything that um, I think people want in a master breed. And then they, everything that uh, when you reading uh, on these different, uh, even you know, just masters in general. You know, masters got a history within themselves. Um, they they all had a more at the end of the day. Um, it's a lot of stuff. They everything that the old dogs uh, were. You know, man. It's kind of like bringing the old dogs uh, to the new generation. At that day, uh, they still they still got the size. They still impressive, but they still got that that guardianship and the companionship together. That a lot of these dog breeds today that you really don't see. You know what I mean? You might have dogs that got the size. You might dogs got dogs that got the look, but the protective instinct ain't there. A lot of these dogs are just too, too nice. You know what I mean? And you get, you got people that's fooling themselves at the end of the day, assuming that uh, just because the dog is that size and he looks intimidating that the dog is going to perform, um, you can always just come and get your colossal mass and that's got, the, that's got uh, you know, just an uh, imposing look. Um, still got the family... Uh, Aspect and and go uh, actually be real like protective and, and they go uh, fraudulent about it at the end of the day. It ain't nothing that it's a guessing game. This dog is real life. Um, gonna be by your side if, if things you know what I'm saying get to that point. Uh, so and and, I, and I'm proving it though, like too, because at the end of the day you gotta think. My whole I got a whole I got six dogs over there right now. I got a whole yard. Uh, everybody uh, doing protection work. Most programs that you see out here, you got maybe one or two dogs that's working. You know what I mean? Or when they having litters, you got one or two dogs that's uh, actually making the do what it do. I'm having litters where majority of the litters coming out uh, working dogs. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? On a consistent basis. Um, like I say, every man's one of my dogs in protection work. Um, a few people that got dogs for me, the people who actually... Um, I doing, you know, protection with them. They are doing excellent. It. The others who I, who you know, they might not be into the whole uh, protection scene of it. They just want a dog that just got that natural instinct. They doing a, a real good job at that because, like I say, it's built into them without you even having to go into really having to go into a whole protection thing to get to wake it up. It's already woke. You know what I mean? When you when 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 you just doing the protection with him, you just certified and make sure that this dog is gonna make it do what it do when the time come. But it's already there. Um, the people who got dogs call me and tell me all the time. Um, I've seen it throughout generation through generation. All my dogs, I post videos on them. Um, the whole nine. So 
they definitely are legit masters that actually do the job and actually um, everything that I real life say that they are. Um, man, uh, a few. Uh, well, first, my uncle, uh, her. He the one who pretty much got me started with the wheel besides my old man. Uh, him and my old man, they the ones who pretty much got me started with the whole uh, dog thing in the first place. Uh, Colossus actually came from my uncle. Uh, so he definitely, you know, really got me started as far as my program. Um, Tim, Tim Odom, uh, he the one who uh, breathed the Ileana blood master. That's my... My guy, too. I've been knowing him since I was a kid. Uh, he really been supporting me and supporting my program, man, since I started it. And, you know, we kind of pretty much started to get to him a little bit before me. But, you know, we throw ideas at each other and, uh, you know, give each other good advice on our programs and stuff like that. And he's been, you know what I'm saying, there since the beginning. So definitely him. Um, who else? I'm probably missing a few, but for the most part, uh, that's who it is. Look at them going crazy already. But for the most part, uh, that's the thing. I don't know who who really, you know, support me and people I can really call and go to and uh, ask them what they think about certain stuff uh, as far as, you know, breeding and different dogs and things like that. Um, also, I do want to, uh, you know, kind of shout out my people who came on as breeders. Uh, like, I'm going to still give them their Facebook name because I don't want to put people's uh, names out, you know, uh, because, you know, it's not that rude. But, uh, Graham is a uh, definitely got a dog for me uh, from the middle two years ago when we first uh, interviewed. Uh, he got, but well, he actually got two. He got one from that first litter and he got one from that second litter. So next year, um, uh, he'll be breeding. Uh, Ryan, he got two. Uh, my guy Mike out here in Chicago, he got some. Um, one of my other guys, Andre. Um, who else? I know I'm missing some people. And I re- oh, my guy, um, my guy James out in Indiana. He got one from the litter uh, two years ago. So these are all people that's coming on as breeders. They're going to start, uh, you know, producing colossal masses themselves directly for me. And, you know, until, until they get enough dogs over there, uh, they ain't got to necessarily keep coming back to me. They could, you know, start really doing what they do yeah. on their own. But, uh, yeah, besides me, uh, if anybody... You know, interested in breed. Um, if I don't have anything on the ground, you can always reach out to those people. Uh, like I say, they have it besides me. I'm pretty sure we have litters at different times. So, and on top of that, they might be closer uh, to you too. You know what I mean? Because I'm in Chicago. Uh, they is George, what Georgia, Iowa, uh, Pennsylvania. Um, well, areas, you know, areas like that. So anybody that's like close uh, in those surrounding areas that, you know, Chicago might be too far, you can always reach out to them and get the same dog, uh, same quality, everything uh, that I get directly for me. Direct, uh, from them, directly for me. So, um, let's see. I think it pretty much covered yeah. everything. Uh, like I say, uh, I do. I did just do a litter last. I mean, a breeding last week. So I do have a litter coming November seventh. Um, so that's going to be a really, really nice, uh, nice body, good temperament, uh, real working dogs. Um, I'm actually thinking about keeping a. And I really probably don't even need. So I got so many dogs now, but I, I'm thinking about keeping one off this litter. Um, just because it's, it's a, it's a breed I've been wanting to do, um, since I got these two dogs. So, uh, we'll see if I'm going to keep one or not, but, you know, just to give people heads up, I definitely get that. And, um, you know, just again, shout out to people who actually came on as breeders and next year, you know, look out for them. Uh, also again, uh, the website, I'm definitely going to get the Colossal Master website together so people could really 
uh, you know, have something to get on and really look at what's going on as far as uh, upcoming widows, puppies, uh, studs, females, uh, you know, just different uh, pics and videos of them out on a regular basis. Uh, hot rides at the Force Preserve, on stoves with the kids, try to get as much hands on without actually uh, owning a dog right on back as I possibly can, you know what I mean? Just really get people interest up and just let them know, like, uh, uh, this is what that dog gonna be, you know what I mean? And uh, so when you, if you're interested in it, that's that's what it, that's what it is. It ain't no, like I say, it ain't no fraud, fun, or nothing of that about it. They exactly um, what I promote the dogs as, you know what I mean? And the proof is in the foot. <laughs> right, for sure. That's awesome. Hey, this is uh, Sean from the Bulldog Social Club Podcast. I have a quick favor for you. If you live in the Kansas City, Missouri area and are looking to buy or sell a house, uh, please contact my wife. Uh, she's a hardworking real estate agent uh, looking for looking for some business, and she'll make sure that you, uh, you meet all your needs. Uh, if you're actually looking to move to the Kansas City, Missouri area, Again, contact my wife, and she'll work extra hard for you, and she'll get you into that uh, that house that you're looking for in the good area, and uh, you'll be doing me a favor by uh, getting her some business. Thank you very much. Bye.